Welcome to the Intuitive Websites Internet Marketing Podcast, bringing you the country's top podcast on the subject of internet marketing with your hosts, Glenn Thayer and the CEO of Intuitive Websites, Thomas Young. Folks, welcome back to another podcast. Tom and I are here again, and uh, like we've said in the past, if you want to have your website reviewed, go ahead and shoot us an email there at info at intuitivewebsites.com. Make sure we get you in the queue. Check it out. Uh, today, we've got homes.com. We're going to be checking out that website, and uh, I, mean, I can only imagine, Tom, how many hits... Uh, that people have for, for Google, just Google AdWords for homes. I mean, did, have you found out what that what that hit number is? Well, the, the search term uh, homes is huge in Google. It has, Google reports is 45 million searches in the U.S. alone for the word homes. And I'm imagining that that's got to include uh, the word homes in a variety of phrases. Um, but the bottom line for this website, homes.com, H-O-M-E-S.com, is that they're number one in Google for the term home. So if you if you go search for homes uh, on the web, you'll see them come up first. And it's something we've talked about in the past. If you have a domain name that has the search term in it, and you have a title tag that has the name in it, you're going to get pretty high in the search engines, and that's what homes.com has done. Uh, so they're number one. And um, what we want to do in the, in the podcast today is just take a look at this website and ask the question, how does the website generate results? How does it make money? Um, and who's benefiting from the site? And then what are some recommendations we can give to Homes.com so that all the stakeholders that are involved in this website and all the visits that it gets can see value? And um, and so, um, you know, we're, we're here in my office, and Glenn and I are looking at a computer screen. We're going to click through to Homes.com if you're there, and you can do the same on your computer. Um, that would be good. You can follow along. So... You know, and, and I'm not sure, Glenn, you probably haven't seen the site. Have you? This is the first time I've logged on to the site is, is right now and, and looking at this right here. Uh, you know, if we're, if we're asking the, the first question is the revenue model. You know, how, how does it make money? Because yes. obviously, as a person who's on the web a lot, anytime I land at a website, I'm asking myself a question. If it's not a specific website for a company that I'm looking to do business with for a product or service, yeah. and it might be an aggregate site, which is what I would consider homes.com, is how are they making money? Right. Is it, yeah, are they selling homes? Are they? They're not. It doesn't look like they're selling homes. It looks like they have listings to places. But how is my information being used? If I type information in, <laughs> yes. How is it being used? Yeah. You right. Know, that's that's right. the first question that I'm doing. What type of tracking is happening for me? Now, this is a very high level. Most people probably aren't thinking that when they visit a website. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, it, okay. With a site like Homes.com, it has such a broad marketplace. Um, you hit on something real important, and that is that. People are all thinking very different things. I mean, there's a wide variety of, 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 of folks that will come to this website, and the thought process behind each person could be completely different. Some people definitely are coming to the site thinking, um, what do they want from me, and how are they going to make any kind of income from my use of this site? And then that leads to the next question of, well, can, they, can I trust this website? If I start searching on this website, are they going to start putting cookies on my computer and realizing that I've looked at a certain property and then come back and start hounding me with phone calls and emails or something. So all that, you know, what, what you're going through in your mind is something that, that many, many users are thinking about. So um, in a nutshell, I think it's going to be real important for people that look at this site to be thinking, well, what, you know, they're going to think, what can I do on this site? And then they're going to start thinking, well, what are they getting a benefit from me? And the initial thing, might, the initial result might be, well, they're going to get some kind of a commission if I actually buy something. But when you think through that, it doesn't really flow too well, does it? Because no. buying a property or you know moving into an apartment or something is a pretty important part of someone's life, and they're probably not going to make that happen from a website like Homes, Homes.com. They're going to have an agent they're working with or something. However, if you go to the extreme right-hand top corner, there's two little buttons at the top menu in the navigation menu, sign in That's right. and join. That's right. So if I see something that says join, what that goes to me is, ooh, I have a cash outlay here. That's right. That's right. Or they're going to get your information and start marketing to you. Um, but, at, but anyway, the answer to how they make money is, and it's not very uh, evident from the home page, but once you do a search or once you click on a property, um, and, and the website knows where we're located. It knows to show some featured listings based on, on our location. Once you get into the site, then you start to see how they make money, which is off advertising. 
um, and you see a lot of ads for realtors, which makes sense. But you also see national ads. You also see uh, Google AdSense ads and other ads that have been uh, remarketed through Google AdSense. And you can start to see, well, yeah, that's how they make money is through the advertising, which is interesting to me because when I see that, I think right off the bat, okay, great. Well, then this website exists to please the advertisers, right? So then the next question is, well, what do advertisers want from this website? And my thought is that a realtor wants leads and they want to sell homes. A mortgage broker wants leads and they want to sell mortgages. So the real question to this website is, um, how do they how do they get that need met from their advertisers? And it's kind of challenging because when you come to a site like this and you start searching for a home and you start seeing these ads pop up, we just know that most people don't respond to these ads. Most people don't click on the ads. Most people use the site to get whatever the value they can get from it. And then they move on. They usually have a realtor they're already working with, or they will search and click through to a realtor um, from their own search specifically for a realtor, as opposed to going to homes.com and finding a realtor there. Now, it may be that they get so many visits, you know, if they're doing millions of visitors a month, that they just have that tiny, tiny little percentage of people that, you know, impulsively will click on an ad. I'm looking at an ad of a realtor here. Uh, click here to click here to pre-qualify with Richard, your local representative. Well, it's just that's just such a tough conversion to make that happen. But I guess if you have a million people on the site, maybe a handful will click through and, and talk to Richard. Right. Well, I you know I think the other the other part of it too is when we start looking at at the, the revenue generating model is the, the ads are going to be there if they've got enough hits because of the fact it's homes.com that that kind of alleviates a lot of the issues it's like this is how much traffic we get if you want to be part of the traffic you can do it yes I think the other part that we're looking at is driving preferred agents now there was on the on the home page there was a, something that came up right there for uh, a property in Norfolk Virginia and I clicked on that property. Now, what happens is you click on that property. Let's just go back to the home page really quick, and maybe we can, and you and I can be on the same, yeah, because uh, you're on, on the same page. I, I went, yeah. I went into an internal page here. So if we go back in there and we see see what's in there, um, first up, and oh, you've got one of the golf club drive. Um, does it have a preferred for request information? Hey. So if you go click on the the. There's no picture. If you're going to, all the agents need to have their pictures on here, by the way. If there's, if and there's one, there was one that, for an example, let's, uh, yeah, there we go. See, it goes to preferred. Now, this right here is where I would see somebody would, the agent would come in and they might pay an, uh, a monthly fee to homes.com to be listed as a preferred. Mm -hmm. The other thing, when I, when I came into this other property at, uh, in Norfolk, Virginia, I don't know why it has me there, but that's where it has showing me properties from. Mm hmm. When I click on it, there is no agent information. Now, if I had information, a little box, this little request information box, and it had the picture of the agent, it had their information for their real estate office, and it said request information, and I said, hey, this is I'm moving to Norfolk, Virginia. I'm interested in this property. I would put my information in there. I would put my name and email address and, and phone number saying, hey, I'm interested in this property. Yeah, and, and I think that from the user experience, also, if, if you have a great user experience on this site in searching for the property, then basically the site is giving you this, this great branding, right? And that branding translates into a higher conversion rate. So you're much likely to click on an agent if you had a good experience with the website. So there, it's kind of a two-edged sword that they're working on. And, I, and, and, and getting back to the advertisers and, and what the advertisers want, these folks that, that are the... Um, the preferred or anyone who's running an ad here, they want to get leads. So the most important thing that homes.com can do is set up tracking systems to show these realtors and these other advertisers that they're getting impressions and they're getting click-throughs and that their properties, or if they have featured properties or whatever, are getting folks looking at them and that there's a way to capture interest from the site. That's what's going to drive advertisers. Otherwise, you're just going to get into this whole idea of just rotating ads it for people looking for a quick fix. Um, and, and people on the web, especially realtors, are notorious for throwing money at things when they don't really understand how it works. <laughs> they right. can say, oh yeah, you get a million people a, a month on your site, get me, I want some of that action. Well, that's fine, but they need to be able to measure specifically the returns. And, the, and, and I, would, I would recommend that anyone who advertises on this site gets a report 
from homes.com on a regular basis that says your ad displayed this many times and your ad clicked through this many times and points of interest on the website, your properties or whatever it might be, were seen this many times. So once you cover that and you've got happy advertisers who can see results, then come back and focus on the user experience and just make it an amazing user experience. I um, mean, you're going to have to compete with some other heavy hitting websites. Now, this site does some great things and it's got some cool functionality, but it also does a few things that um, that can be a little confusing. And if you go to if you go to the, the major well, one of the biggest things I saw is that on the home page there is this find homes for sale box, which is basically saying click me and put something in right away. I mean, it's, it's just screaming at, at, for that. Um, I think it's real important that that search box, that same search functionality is on more than just the home page. It needs to be throughout the site because people will be coming back to this search as a kind of their anchor point to, to narrow what they're looking for. When they do get to the, through the search, um, and let me do a search here, you want to there's just a couple little things that I think would be helpful. For one is put the address and the price together. Don't separate the address of the home from the price of the property because that just confuses people. And there's a lot of sites out there and a lot of um, experiences that home buyers have where they can't find the address for a website or they can't find the price. Right. Like if you ever gone to a property, oh, look at that house. I wonder how much it's selling for. And you go to the flyer that's you know, the flyer that's in the box by the front door. No, no price. price. And so you're like, well, that doesn't help me. And so you want you want to just make sure that in your search results, the address for the property is listed next to the price. You know, the other thing I want to bring up on that too, and this is this is just a sales uh, just a, a sales issue as well. Yep. Is for those agents that are not listing the price because they say, oh well, I want the phone call so I can have a conversation about the property. It's like when people are looking at homes, they want the price, well, and, yeah. it's, and if it's not, if it's in their price range, they will call. And basically, what you've done is you've wasted everybody's time because if that's out of their price, their their price league, you're now having a conversation, wasting your time and wasting this other person's time as well. Yeah, so. it's it's a huge problem in this industry is the whole uh, the looky loo problem. We've talked about this in other podcasts where there's so many folks just just looking and really don't have an interest in buying. Um, you see that, for example, in the parade of homes that is actually going on right now here in Colorado Springs. In the parade of homes, for every thousand people that walk in. There might be one or two that actually is a interested, qualified buyer. Most people go because they just want to see. They love to see homes. And, and they and, want to see what's possible for their own home. Hey, I can remodel and have something like this. Yeah, yeah maybe maybe two or three years from now we'll do this. So, um, but, but so, so the user experience is absolutely critical for this website. And, and you're right, Glenn. You caught on a very important part of the site, which is the sign in and join. And when I look at those two, I'm thinking sign in and join. Well, I, I want to join but not sign in, or I want to sign in but not join. I mean, it's a little confusing there. So um, the thing that needs to happen in both of those areas is that there's, there's, it needs to be very clear as to why we do this. So, so put some content in here about the benefits of joining um, and, and signing in. I, I mean, I think you know one of the key, clear benefits is you can save your searches. You can get reminders when properties come up for sale or properties are sold or whatever. So, but just explain those benefits because um, something that's going to be of value to you guys in homes.com and to your advertisers down the road is a fantastic email list. A very targeted, awesome email list, and that's what's going to happen from these folks that sign in. You know, there's there's another thing on this too. Before, because I also want to touch on advertise on homes.com, um, but I want to get to that in just a moment. What what you're talking about as far as signing in? When we go back to the home search with what you have right here, uh, my big question comes to mind is: if I'm interested in a home, how do I save it? Because I can see that I can save this search, but how do I save on each of the homes? Well, each of the little listings. There's a little save button on here. Yes. I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe that will be able to use the cookies that I have and save that property. However, when I click save, it now says sign up for my homes. Now, myself, as somebody who's just perusing homes and might be on their site, I would never fill this out. Hmm. Because it's, I'm thinking of it like Amazon.com, and this is where Homes.com can probably take a hint from online resellers and yes. e-commerce. I can browse all the things through Amazon and never have to put my email in. I never have to sign in, and it will give me a history of what I viewed. Yes. And now if I have a way to do that, now what they can also do here, which might be another enticement to get me to sign in or put my email address in, is how would you like to, here's what you can do. A pop-up box can come up like this, and it can give me the option. 
I can email you a list of every, and links of everything that you viewed today. Yes. And here's where it is. I just need your phone number or, or not your phone, sorry, your phone number, your, your email address. Yeah. Uh, or you can say, no, thanks. Just keep browsing. Absolutely. And it, you know, and what I would encourage, um, homes.com to do if they haven't already is do some user testing because there's a lot of great functionality on the website and in fact there's probably too much functionality and a lot of it's going to get lost one of the one of the coolest pieces of functionality they have is at the bottom left which is called local resources it comes up on a on a search and um, you can find out how much your home is worth you can see an idea gallery you can get mortgage quotes and so forth Good stuff, but you know when when it's down at the bottom of the page, below the fold, and it's amongst another forty or fifty links and options, it's and, going to get lost. And it's in the middle of the advertising as well, so automatically my eyes check out because viewing this and all these ads go right hand in hand. That's right. So so. I think that strategically, homes.com should really do some research and some testing and try to figure out what are the most important parts of this website for the advertisers, for the users, and, to, and start to hone it down and, and, and make that work. And, um, you know, this the, the navigation on the left, there's just so much there. Um, and I guess that it's another variation on the search. I would recommend one standard search functionality. Um, that users have to use and not give them, you know, option after option after option for searching because they just won't end up using it. And if you go all the way down to the bottom, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, on, the search results, on, on, right. on there, you see down at, at the bottom there, check out our new home values section, explore now. Now, if I wasn't specifically looking for things, I wouldn't see that. Because it looks like an ad, and, and it's, it is true. We've seen it that, you know, people tend to ignore ads. But the site does have some great data. Once you jump in and start looking at, um, at I mean, the data. demographics, population, this is all information. When you click that Explore Now, this yeah. is great information looking at a new town to relocate to. That's right. And, and this is the kind of information that leads to people signing up for a new website and joining you and trusting the website more which also leads to more click-throughs on advertisers because if they trust the site more, they're more likely to, to make contact with you. Um, it would be interesting to see the stats on the advertisers to see what kind of click-through rates they have. Um, Scroll all the way down to the bottom and go to the company info for advertising. This is the one thing. The, the other thing, since we were going to advertising, click the advertising link there. Yeah, advertising. And, and this makes it really, really easy. Advertise on homes.com. National advertising, agents, brokers, mortgage lenders. Who are you? You're one of yeah, the four. That's a nice page, isn't it? That makes it very, very easy. It's very simple. You can click on each one of those, or if you already know what you're going to be doing, put your information in and, and, and do that. Yeah. You know, so a great website. they fortunate enough to have this awesome domain name and, and of course, that led to lots and lots of traffic. But, um, you know, be careful not to, to swamp the site with, with tons of functionality and, and, and lots and lots of options. Stay true to the strategy. So what type of uh, action items can Homes.com take? Well, and, and, you know, my number one thought when I looked at this website is, and I was actually in touch with someone at Homes.com, and they told, they told me about the revenue model. But my, my initial thought was, how can you develop other revenue models from, from the website? And how can you move beyond um, all the success just from the, web, the domain name, Homes.com, into other revenue models? And I think one of the best ways to do that is from extensive user testing, user research. research. So you start to segment and quantify your users into the different thoughts they have as they visit your site. And like you said, Glenn, whether it's about credibility and trust or whether it's about search or whether it's about actually buying property or renting property, let's get that figured out. And then from that will come other revenue models. Um, I also think that, uh, that, that the most important thing the site can do is build loyalty and trust among site visitors. And that will drive to conversions. Um, I would also keep your navigation consistent, your search functionality consistent, avoid multiple navigation systems. I, I think the site, the homepage is very cluttered. I, I do think that you can simplify the site without losing advertisers and revenue. And in fact, if you simplify the site, you might be able to get more conversions for your advertisers, um, which is the bottom line. I think that uh, definitely local resources should be more prominent on the website because obviously most people are going to be looking for homes in the area they live in. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think that just realize that 
the more content and the more links and so forth that you add to each page, the more that is ignored. And so if you look at your stats and do user testing, try to scale it back and just get to the most important content, simplify the website, and you have a chance to you know, hit an amazing home run with this site. And as we always go back to Netflix.com, make it super simple on make everything simple. so you're not, yes. you're not focused on 10 million other things. Well, thanks a lot uh, to the folks at Homes.com for having us review your site. And uh, once again, folks, if there's any questions you have on anything that we talked about, uh, we've gone over almost all of these uh, concepts, user testing and all of that in our previous podcast, so make sure you go back and listen to those if you have any questions. Thanks for joining us. This has been an Intuitive Websites Internet Marketing Podcast. For more information and to see all the available podcasts and much more, visit intuitiveblog.com. If you have a website you'd like us to review or an issue you'd like to see covered in future podcasts, email us at info at intuitivewebsites.com.